Godel is currently $40 a month. We are going to raise the price pretty substantially pretty soon. But if you subscribe, you get to lock in your price for life, which is probably a decision I'm going to regret at some point. You got to do one for the people sometimes. Yeah, we're going to make our own keyboard. I don't know how many keyboards we're going to give out or sell. We talked to a keyboard guy. I think one of the best things about Godel, I mean, everyone likes something a little different, like each component is handcrafted with care um, to give you the best efficiency, and the best productivity. I think for me, if you have to look at stocks all day long, there's nothing like being able to rapidly cycle through lots of different stocks with only, only your keyboard, not having to ever use your mouse. But it's different for everyone. Like for example, one of the cool things is time and sales. I mean, obviously I think a few of these programs have time and sales, but not all of them do. Markets barely open obviously, but being able to get live NASDAQ, SIP feed down to the millisecond, this tells you the millisecond of the trade time. You have latency dynamics, just a lot of ways to win. The chat room's really good. If you're a subscriber, I'll personally do some stock analysis for you. That won't last forever, but we're making some really cool systems here. Global stocks are coming. Bonds are coming. Most of the other systems out there don't have any of that. Yeah, we're going to have Norway and Sweden and Finland. Probably by year end, we'll have every global stock market. Well, I think it's important that if you see a stock quote, like <laughs> that you know how, many, how much time it took for that stock quote to reach you. It's not perfectly important to anybody in practical reality, but I think it's, it's good to have that kind of um, transparency. Like Google, if you Google a stock quote, it really is misleading what they're showing you, in my opinion. So like we pay attention to those kinds of details when most other people don't. Like we get our data directly from NASDAQ and it pipes over from Secaucus, New Jersey to, does it go to Virginia? AWS in Virginia? Secaucus, New Jersey, and NASDAQ. To US East 1, yeah. To US East 1, to, to you. <laughs> and that can be anywhere from 10, not 10. That can be anywhere from 50 to 100 milliseconds, or it could be 500 milliseconds. And we want to show you every trade that happens, not just the trades that are convenient for us to show you because of bandwidth or whatever. So yeah, no, I'll, I, I, I know of evolution. I'd like to look at evolution. It's the gaming software company, giant company, really amazing Swiss company. I'm sorry, Swedish company. Very, very cool company. It's actually one of the most successful, I mean, it's sort of a software service hybrid because they do the dealers. Like every online casino uses them basically. And it's such an amazing business. I don't know if it's a perfect buy or sell now. That's a different story, right? And the other thing is, I mean, to make your own watch list is something you can't really do with Google or Yahoo very easily. And looking up the news on any of those is like very, very difficult, whereas it's just one quick, quick button. Again, the productivity is just insane. You know, being able to open company filings with one click, go to another stock, pieces of data very quickly. Um, we have a screener we're still working on making that really awesome but the screeners you know and it's very early days but this is basically what bloomberg looks like and feels like when we make an api around that latency i think that's when it gets really interesting if you're going to connect that api to, to trading and it is our goal to like give you algorithmic trading tools that are easy to understand and use so just looking down the road but yeah i mean obviously if you're looking at a stock price on yahoo finance it's probably right. And if you're making your trade based on that, it's you know a little worry. I, to me, it's a little worrisome. I want the data straight from the exchange, but it's not the be all end all. It's like all these little pieces adding up to have attention to detail. Restaurant stocks always look cheap because <laughs> unlike an EV, any other basis, they, they tend to look cheap, but they're usually not and performing very well right now. At least these guys aren't. Restaurant stocks can only really grow when they add more restaurants. And other than that, they have what's called same store sales, which is kind of hard to grow. One question is how many restaurants do you have? What's your same stores? Carabas, Bonefish Grill, and Fleming Steakhouse. Outback's their biggest one. Yeah, I wouldn't, I'm not sure I would touch this one. But again, I'm not a restaurant analyst. I do want to see how many facilities they have. Yeah, it's hard to grow if you're closing down restaurants. Each restaurant does around a million bucks. So, or, well, $700,000 a quarter. So what's that, three million a year? It looks pretty bleak to me, but 
you know, it's kind of a value stock. I don't, I don't know the restaurant industry fundamentals well enough. Um, I, I don't know if I'd collab with Elon. I like him. Elon's good at granting value for Elon and his shareholders. I think you can make money working for Elon, but I don't know. Two, two guys with big ideas like that are not good in the same room. Honestly, I think the same answer with 100 to 200,000, other than you, you have a little bit more breathing room than if you had 10,000. But so many people look at investing and they think that because there's easy access to investing that they're like, oh, I can do that. And the problem is that that's just not realistic because the question is, can you get hired at D. Shaw, right? Well, what does it take to work here? D. Shaw is a home for curious minds. We have high ethical standards and enjoy solving difficult problems. Joining our team means you work with creative, socially conscious, and nerdy set of individuals. We thrive on diversity uh, in life experiences, fields of study, and way of thinking, just to name a few. Click here to apply. We welcome exceptional applicants from all backgrounds. Generalist. We're seeking individuals with impressive records of achievement to join the DE Shaw Group. Generalists are considered for one of several departments at the firm, including corporate development, investor relations, COO, and risk. We'll work on challenging high-impact projects. Candidates should have zero to five years of experience and a demonstrated remarkable talent in their academic or professional endeavors. We neither expect nor require prior finance knowledge or experience. We're just looking for brilliant people. Welcome applications from individuals in all academic disciplines. Recent generalist hires include computer science, economics, humanities, as well as PhDs in scientific fields. Successful generalists are effective communicators and critical thinkers who take a highly analytical approach to solving problems. Excel at managing multiple product Project motivated by a desire to learn, take on new challenges. We're more interested in talent, curiosity, and motivation than any particular skill or experience. You want to be attractive to a place like this so you can make 50 million bucks. I'm giving you real advice. Somebody asked me for advice. There was a young guy that worked here who was a friend of a friend. Um, you can look him up, actually, if you want. A lot of you guys follow the wrong people, like... Uh, some of these people on, uh, you follow the right, you got to follow the right people. Michael Burry is not the only moneymaker. Follow this guy, Michael Bigger. So yeah, I think, you know, if you have 100,000 or 200,000, whatever, it doesn't really matter. You know, you want to position your career so that you're going to make millions of dollars. So my friend worked for, uh, a mutual friend worked for this guy, Michael Bigger, or worked with him. And um, he left and he started his own startup. And the startup had nothing to do with his work at D. Shaw. And he became very wealthy. Uh, maybe some of you guys know who I'm talking about. But he worked at D. Shaw with Michael Bigger. Anybody who can guess uh, the answer here gets a free month of Godel. So he worked with Michael Bigger early on D. Shaw. Bigger stayed for a couple more years, I think. Maybe not too much longer. The other guy stayed for not much longer, very short period of time. Went and started his own startup. Startup did very, very well. And D. E. Shaw, their goal is just to keep hiring people like that. Yeah, you'd have to guess the guy's name. Um, <laughs> and so when you, when you have an ability to hire these amazingly talented people, they keep growing and keep, you know, the network, you know, expands. There's some of these talent magnets, like Tiger was in one of them. Tiger is a good example. No, Bill Wang worked at Tiger, not D. Shaw. Um, come on, I can't believe you guys don't know this. This is like such an obvious thing. Thank you, God Mode. God Mode got it. Congratulations to God Mode. Yeah, his name was Jeff Bezos. And uh, Jeff uh, and D. Shaw, they got to invest in Amazon first round. I think Bigger was one of the biggest shareholders. So the point is, you know, look at firms like this, see what real excellence looks like. I guess the long way to put it is don't worry about dollars and cents right now. Worry about your talent, your ability to do things, your leadership skills, the important things. That's what's going to determine whether you can work at a place like D.E. Shaw, make a hundred million bucks or whatever the next D.E. Shaw or Citadel is. D.E. Shaw will probably always be a special place. The point is, you know, I know he likes Nan WBO. I don't like that one. But um, that's neither here nor there. Bigger's one of these guys that's too rich. <laughs> but yeah, learn how to make money as a skill to your point private equity, buying small businesses and growing. Or 
learn how to, you know, do something nobody else can do, you know, and, and you'll, you'll succeed in that way. But if you're trying to get the market to turn your 50K into 5 mil, you know, you can do that. But what you're really asking is, how do I become a master investor? Focus on answering that question and use your money to help you instead of using your money to, you know, fixate on trying to create that 5 million. Because think about it this way. You might be able to turn 50K into 5 million in 10 years. But are you better off learning the skills? Let's say, five, I'm sorry, 50K to 5 million in 10 years. Are you better off taking five years to become a, as master of investor you can, working at a hedge fund and getting paid 10 million in one year with none of your money at risk? Fund just gives you a 10 million bonus. Vivek did that. That's the goal. So you come out with the money and the skills. Yeah, we had GitLab on Goodell. I was so happy to see that.